Hey guys, yeah, for today's video, I'm going to give you guys my starting 15 for the Wallabies for this 2023 Rugby World Cup. Before I do so, let me know in the comments what you guys think, if you guys agree or disagree with my team. Also, like and subscribe. Besides that, let's get straight into this. So as you can see right here, this is the front row that I've selected for this Wallabies side. Again, I think it's probably most... Is it the most experienced front row you can go with? I'd probably say so. I mean, again, I've gone with James Slipper ahead of Angus Bell, which, again, maybe a lot of people will disagree with me in that front. But I just think you've got to go with experience here. And when you have someone like James, you know, James Slipper under your belt, you just got to utilize him. So he's my number one for this. Number two, I've gone with Dave Parecki. You know, I just think out of the hooker choices that the Wallabies really have, I mean, it's really what between him, you got what, Jordan Uwesi. And then, yeah, just Matt Fazler, which he's kind of coming to his own, but I just think he, it's not really the stage of, you know, he's not at the right stage of his career to kind of be first choice. So I think the right decision at the moment is probably Dave Parecki. And then of course, you got to go with Tanya Tupo. That's like no doubt in there because, you know, him, you know, since him, you know, coming back from injury, he's just kind of been a, a good kind of, um, you know, player to have really in terms of that front row. Because again, they have lost a lot of players uh, from a proper position. So um, yeah, it's good to have obviously someone like Tanya Tupo there in that front row for the Wallabies. But um, yeah, no, again, we will then towards the uh, the locking pairing that I've gone with. Again, this is probably the locking pairing that Eddie Jones has gone with the most, I'd say, um, in terms of, you know, since his kind of a restart, you could say, at the Wallabies. And I've also gone with the likes of, you know, Nick Frost as well as Will Skelton. I just think these two are probably the best, I'd say, in terms of locking departments. Like, again, you're going to know Will Skelton no matter what because he is obviously now the captain of the Wallabies. And um, yeah, he's just, he's a great player really to have because again, he has a lot of expense under his belt. He's one of the only few players in this Wallaby squad that really has a lot of, you know, kind of, um, I guess, history in terms of winning in terms of, you know, club experience and all that. So um, yeah, he can kind of obviously bring that towards the international stage and, you know, going into this World Cup, it's, you know, it's going to be needed as well because you want to get through those, um, I guess, games and the group stages as well as the knockouts. And then, yeah, I guess in terms of his partner with Nick Frost, I just think he's had a great year in terms with the Brumbies. He's been, he's kind of carried that over, I'd say, into the international stage. Again, he's had moments where he hasn't been as consistent as you would want him to be, but he has proved at points where, you know, he's probably the best option um, other than Skelton in that position. Because, uh, again, you do have the likes of what? Like, what, Matt Phillip, I believe. You've got, like, Richie Arnold there. But I just think I would probably go with Nick Frost ahead of them ahead of them too. But, um, yes, I guess in terms of the loose forwards, I've gone with the Wallabies here. I think this is pretty standard now in terms of who you're going to select because, you know, with Michael Hooper obviously not, not available and, you know, they're kind of moving away from Jed Holloway – in terms of that, I guess that starting six position, you're going to go with Tom Hooper, of course, number six. He's probably been the best player, I think, that kind of Eddie's introduced since his kind of um, start towards the Wallabies because he was he literally came out of nowhere, by the way, and he kind of he's kind of got you know kind of got onto his feet and it's kind of made him an impact already on this uh, you know for this Wallabies side. So I think he's kind of a good player to have in terms of that six role. Uh, number seven, I mean, he was really going to be uh, nobody else except for Fraser McWright in this position because, you know, again, with uh, Michael Hooper not obviously being selected for the Wallabies for this Rep World Cup, Fraser McWright was always seen as kind of like the, um, I guess, the apprentice, the set of least, to Hooper. And, yeah, he's now going to have the chance to do it in a World Cup, which is um, great to think because, you know, he I, – I mean, I remember even back, what was it, like 2020 or like even maybe – before then when he kind of came onto the scene in Super Rugby and yeah he was brilliant for the Reds and you know he's kind of cared that since and um, again he kind of brings a tackling game a tackling aspect to it which is really crucial in terms of that loose four position so um yeah it's good to have someone like him obviously on that front and then yeah to finish it off I've gone with Rob Valentini at the number eight again he is definitely the best option it's um yeah, I mean, there's not really any challenger really for him because normally I say, oh, you got like someone like Pete Samu or you got someone like Harry Wilson. But hey, those two haven't been selected. So it's really interesting to see kind of who's going to kind of cover or well, kind of challenge him because the only other person I can think of is really Langley um, Gleason actually as the number eight. And he, again, he's great by the way, but he hasn't had a lot of minutes under, I guess, um, Eddie's system. So it's interesting to see if he'll be introduced or not uh, within the Triple World Cup. But um, no, besides that, we'll then move on then towards the back line for the Swally side. I've gone for the 9-10 combination of Tate McDermott as well as Carter Gordon. I just think this is definitely the best combination they can go with. It's a young combination as well, which they can you know, kind of build up that chemistry throughout this World Cup and even after if you need to as well. But particularly in this World Cup, I think this, these two alone just... I've always liked Tim McDermott. He's a he's a great scrum half, and he really does remind me of Will Genia in terms of how he just he go he tries to snipe between the lines and he just tries to score a try. Um, you know when he's close to the twenty two. So I really kind of like that aspect in terms of scrum half, and it's something which I appreciate a lot. Um, but yeah, I guess in terms of number ten, 
Connor Gordon is definitely the hands down 10 at the moment. I mean, again, he, well, they've only really technically what chosen two tens here with um, him as well as uh, Ben Donaldson as well. So, um, yeah, no, yeah, I think you had to go up in there. And again, Reese Hodge, look, in the recent games he's had, it's you know, what, again, like France as well as the, you know, the rugby championship. He hasn't been able to prove it as much as he would like, but at the same time, I think he's definitely made a good start to it. I'm not saying he's had he's been bad at all. I think he just he hasn't had as much um, time to kind of get into the get into the jersey. And again, that's not really a fault of his own, by the way. It's just it's really just more of the progression quickly, just in how quick everything's gone since Eddie's come in. So it's um, interesting to see just how he can kind of uh, you know kind of take on a World Cup because what he's only like like what 22 or 23 years old, so he's a very young fly half to be putting it in that position and, and in terms of the wallabies as well it's massive to have a young fly half so it's a big call but I, I i kind of like it because again he was brilliant within you know the super rugby season with the rebels and i'm hoping he can transfer that over into the world cup so um yeah we'll see what happens on that front but um yeah i guess in terms of the center combination here for this side i've gone with the likes of samu karevi as well as jordan bataya i just think these two alone are probably the best two uh, really to cover that center center position because again without the likes of Len Ikatel anymore in terms of that 13 I think Jordan Ty is definitely the best suited towards that 13 position gives you a bit of X factor as well and he's pretty good just all over the place you know he's a, he's definitely improved in terms of his tackling I think and you know he has an eye for you know kind of a grubber kick as well inside the inside the channels so he can find an offload pretty easily so yeah he's definitely good to have and then yeah Samu Karevi I mean yeah, he's like one of the – well, he's still – I still regard him as one of the best 12s in the world. I mean, I just think he's so underrated now in terms of what he does because I mean, even like back then, it was like two years ago, he got nominated for like uh, World Player of the Year. So it just shows you that he still has it in him. So I think he kind of – I think he can give kind of like that, I don't know, last bit of – um, you know, kind of, he can kind of produce a bit, a few more moments, you could say, within this World Cup. And I I do think that. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping he proves me right. But, um, yeah, Karebi just is it's just an awesome player to have. So, um, yeah, that's my center combo. In terms of, the, I guess, the final three in this sense, um, again, this is a tough pick because there's a lot of winners that could have gone with here as well as the 15. But I think one was guaranteed, which is definitely Corbetti. I mean, that's really no – yeah, that's not really a shock right there to go with Corbetti at the number 11. He's been, you know, he's been literally, what, the Wally's best player for, for the past few years now. Um, so yeah, he's definitely the number 11. It's hands down. I mean, he just has an eye for the try line. He's quick. He's just, he's always in the right position as well. So yeah, no, he's good. And, and again, he's pretty, and from a defensive point of view as well, he kind of helps out in that aspect. So, um, yeah, just, he's a solo player overall to have. So core, but he definitely the number 11 in terms of the 14, it's, it's tough because there is a lot of players you could switch around in these positions. Um, but yeah, I just think you've got to go with Mark, Mark, Nara Kwantawasi here. I just think he's, He's kind of propelled himself, I think, into that position since the rugby championship. And I'd say particularly from that uh, game against Argentina in Australia, I just think from that game alone, he's kind of put himself in that position as the starting 14. So i kind of hoping he can kind of just continue his form, really, because you know, he got to try against France you know, um, you know, the other week. So, um, yeah, just think, I think he can do this now. I think he can kind of persevere in, in, terms, of that, in terms of that position. But, um, yeah, I guess the final one, really, I've gone up here is Andrew Kellaway, number 15. And... It's a tough call because you can go with someone, like I said earlier on, like with Ben Donaldson there if you want to, to have another kind of backup kicker in a sense, well, an extra kicker there. Or you can move Bataya into that uh, 15 role or, I don't know, put someone like Fochetti to cover him there or even Parisi um, um, in that 13 role. So there's a lot you can do. But I just thought Andrew Kellaway, you know, he's kind of proved it, I think, throughout the last few years. And, again, he had a bit of an injury, which he's kind of come back into now. So he's getting a bit more minutes under his belt now. But I just think you've got to give it to him because – he definitely deserves – I think he deserves it. I think at the end of the day, he's kind of proven in terms of the international stage what he's been able to do for the Wallabies. So I think you you have to allow him to kind of carry that on within the World Cup. And I think – look, it's going to be interesting because I, I just don't know what to expect really of this Wallabies side, to be perfectly honest, guys, because they're really up for debate in terms of what they can do. But I think just in terms of the back line, it's a really – it's a young back line when, it, when I look, really look at this, guys. But – it's um yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be good to see what the Wallabies can do but um obviously let me know in the comments what you guys think that is my starting 15 let me know if you guys agree or disagree like and subscribe click the like button guys but other than that I'll see you guys next time hey Bill I'm in the mood for a switch up I hit the function hit the rose till I hiccup I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker she picture perfect so I told her